What is good, my brothers and sisters in Christ? How are you guys doing? Okay, yes, I know it's been snowing like 100% of last week and I hope you guys are safe. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. And so let's get straight into the today's video, today's podcast episode, which is another journey through the Bible. And we are still in the book of Genesis, going through Isaac's life and slowly from Isaac and Rebecca to Isaac and Rebecca's sons. And so today that is what we're going to be having a conversation about. And honestly, I find this chapter to be like so good, so like, you know, revolutionary when it comes to like siblings and like what actually happens as well as the fact that it really like just relates to the New Testament when Jesus comes and has a conversation about the first being second and the second being first and it's just like a lot of a lot of stuff to dig into so with that being said I'm super excited to dig into this let's start off with a prayer dear Heavenly Father we thank you for this day we thank you for allowing us to live in this world and bring people towards you so that we can live in eternity with you as your children. We pray that this Bible journey that we're going through today and every other Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, will, you know, open up our hearts and make us understand truly what you want us to know through this through the Bible and through these different chapters. Amen. Okay, so guys let's get started like i am super duper 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 excited to talk about isaac and rebecca at first because like i feel like everybody has this very strange everybody has a different definition of how to find a husband and how to find a wife and so on and so forth but you know regardless of our definitions the bible is the one and only true source of like just facts in general and how to find you know your husband and wife and so I feel like this goes into it perfectly so Genesis 24 we focus on Isaac and Rebecca and Abraham was now very old and the Lord had blessed him in every way as he promised as you guys seen from the last chapters he said to the senior servant in his household the one in charge of all that he had put your hand under my thigh I want you to swear by the Lord the God of heaven and the God of earth that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I am living but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac the servant asked him what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to his to this land shall I then take your son back to the country you came from make sure that you do not take my son back there Abraham said the Lord the God of heaven who brought me out of my father's household at my native land and who spoke to me and promised me on oath saying to your offspring I will give this line he will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there so initially Abraham was just like listen I'm sending you out there and you know if the lady or if the lady is unwilling to come back then she wasn't meant for my son point a point b God already has chosen who my son's wife is going to be he already knows who's my son's wife is going to be and so with that being said God is guiding you and when God's guiding you there's no questions asked it's already been done for you it's already been chosen all of your ducks are in a row when God is involved especially when he's built like when he's building on a promise that he made to you and so if the, if the woman is unwilling to come back with you then you will be released from this oath of mine which I feel like Abraham just put it in there as a, like a, like just like a make you just make you feel good, you know, just let it go, come back, whatever. But he knew that God had already made a decision on who Isaac's wife was gonna be. Like it's not gonna be some, you know, Canaanite. Like don't be going searching in Canaan for a wife when God already knows who his plans are, and so. He had the camels kneel down near the well outside the town and it was toward evening, the time the woman go out to draw water. Then he prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring 
and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, please let draw in your, your jar that I may have drink. And she says drink and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know you have shown kindness to my master. Now, in the later times in the New Testament, God's was uh, God and Jesus was like, yeah, don't ask me for a sign of when I'm coming. Like you just have to base on trust. But it seems like this servant really just wanted to know, just like us, like, what do I look for? Like, just asking God, like, what do I look for when I'm searching for something that you want me to have? I don't, like, I personally don't want to go off into the world, you know, and find this husband that I love, that I care about, and that I truly want, and then realize that that's not the husband for me, realize that that's not the husband that God has set out for me. So then, when you get into relationships and when you, um meet someone that you like who has his respective qualities then and only then you, you should go before god and ask god is this the right person for me i feel like this is the right person for me but i just want confirmation from you that this is the right person for me and when god gives you that answer and you listen for that answer and you get it hopefully it is the person for you but if it isn't then like abraham said come back because it wasn't, it clearly wasn't for you, and there's always going to be better that God has for you than you actually perceive yourself. And so he said, so it, and so in Genesis 24 verse 15, it said, before he had finished praying, not before, like before he finished asking God what he wanted, before finished like talking to God, and was like, God, let me let me see that she wants a jar, she wants to uh help my camel with water as a word order phrase it but before like before before he had finished his request Rebecca came up with her jar on her shoulder so before you even finish your prayer maybe even sometimes before you even pray for it well yes before you even pray for it he knows what you want he knows what you need now, just because he doesn't answer the prayer, in my personal opinion, doesn't mean he he hasn't heard it. It just means that you're not praying for the right thing. And, you know, unfortunately, in past relationships, I had to realize that I wasn't praying for the right thing. The person that I was currently with was not the right thing for me. And so if that's the case, if I'm saying, God, please let this guy be for me, and sadly to say, he's going to tell me, Janika, that's not for you. I have someone else for you and you won't get that someone else until you let this person go and so just taking that into consideration like when you let that person go and you have those conversations and suddenly you are single and you feel like you're in your season of singleness and you just want to you know be like oh yeah free sweet but I feel like that time is a good time to develop yourself and realize that you know your relationship with God comes first and then after all of that God will come to you and he will present to you someone who you don't necessarily have to go searching for I mean Isaac didn't have to go searching for her uh, Abraham sent his servant to go get her and she came and so the qualities that she was meant to fulfill it was all aligned by the request of the servant and so God wouldn't let any Anna, quote unquote, for example, no hate to the Annas out there, come out to the well when they know Anna wasn't going to be the one to say, drink from my jar, here's some uh, water for your camel. That's not the one for Isaac. But he brought out Rebecca because Rebecca was the one. Rebecca was the one who Isaac needed. And God knew that before the servant stopped the prayer. God knew that before the servant started the prayer. And so... She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. The woman was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said, Please give me a little water from your jar. Please. 
Drink, my lord, she said, and quickly loaded the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too until they have had enough to drink. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, throw, ran back to the well to draw more water and drew enough for all his camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the lord had made his journey successful. And so, when the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring wing a becca and two gold braces weighing 10 shekels and then he asked whose daughter are you please tell me is there a room in your father's house for us to spend the night she answered i'm the daughter of bethuel the son that milk cup born to nahor and she added we have plenty of straw and fodder as well as a room for you to spend the night and so after his request had been filled and his mission had been been completed immediately then the man bowed down and worshiped the lord saying praise be to the lord the god of my of my master abraham who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master as for me the lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives and honestly one of the biggest questions that we always ask ourselves is when we get like to where we're supposed to go did we fully <laughs> complete the mission because sometimes and even when we fully complete the mission do we thank the person who brought us there do we thank the person who dropped us off and said hey here's it here's your gift take it um this is what you asked for here you go do we just run with the gift like do we just run with it go look around uh take the gift move the gift around um, and then be like, oh my goodness, I need to ask God. I need to thank God. I actually, I fully resonate with that because I got a gift earlier this week. And, you know, I went, looked at the gift. Oh, I was so excited about the gift. Called my dad about the gift. And then like mid-call, mid-conversation with my dad about the gift, I was just like, oh wait, hold up, stop, stop everything. I have to pray to thank God for everything that he's done for me and this gift that he gave me unexpectedly. Because literally, the day before I received the gift, I was asking for the gift. I didn't pray about the gift or anything. I was just like, you know, I need this. This is something that I really need for myself, for my own safe mindset, so and so and so forth. And then I got the gift. And then the first thing I did, first, I did the first thing that I do was go and look at the gift. No, I was the first thing I was supposed to say was, Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have given me, and thank you for the gift that you have given me, because without you, I would not have it. And so, I think that's all, that's something definitely that we can learn from Abraham's servants, is to appreciate God for giving you the gift, because without him, you would not have anything, to be honest. And so, the young woman ran and told her mother's household about all the fun things that happened outside. And so, she told um, the guy to come in, and she told her, Rebecca told all of them, her brothers, he went out to the mountain and found him standing by the camel side of the spring. Come you who are blessed by the Lord, he said, why are you standing out here? I prepared the house and place for the camels. And I think one of the other great things about this passage is the fact that where you're going, they're expecting you. Does that make sense? Like where you're going, that level up, God has already prepared that space to ex to accept you in, to take you in wholeheartedly, because He is like this space. It was created for you. It was created for nobody else but you. And so His servant, like he, they knew that He was sent by God, because he, I He didn't never mention being sent by God. And so they said, "Come, you who are blessed by the Lord." He said, why are you standing out here? I have made prepared the house and a place for the camels. And so the man went to the house and the camels were unloaded. Straw and fodder were brought to the camels. And then food was set before him. But he said, I will not eat until I have told you what I have to say. And so my, I'm straight on the mission. Okay, there is nothing that's going to stop this guy from getting to what he was supposed to do, what he was sent here to do. And so sometimes I beckon the question that we get lost on what we were sent to do, getting caught up in what we weren't meant to do. And sometimes I feel like even with content creation, I was sent to start creating content. 
but not on the things that I was creating content on. Does that make sense? And so now that I'm actually like pursuing and working with God to pre to create the Child of God podcast, it's just like, why did I waste all my time in the past just focusing on all that other stuff when really and truly I was supposed to be focusing on consistently building my relationship with God. And so he said, I'm Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master abundantly and that he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep, cows, silver, gold, male and female servants and camels and donkeys. My master's wife, Sarah, has borne him a son her old age and he has given him everything he owns. And my master made me swear an oath that said, you must not get a wife for my son from the daughters of Canaanites in whose land I live, but go to my father's family, to my own clan and get a wife for my son. And then he just went through the whole conversation with the brothers and her father. And so after she presented herself as the one that God had set aside for Isaac, um, they, he asked and continued talking about the fact that he put the ring in her nose and the braces on her arm and bowed down and worshiped the Lord. And he praised, the, he praised God for the fact that he had led him on the right road to get to the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Now, if he will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me. If not, tell me so I may know which way to turn. So if they said no, he was dipping because it wasn't his mission to just, you know, lay there in luxury. Well, I don't know if straw and water is luxury, but to lay there and do whatever because he was solely sent for the purpose and if the purpose was not filled he needed to leave and so when abraham's servant heard what they said he bowed down to the ground before the lord and then the servant brought out gold silver jewelry and articles of clothing and gave it to rebecca and he also gave costly gifts to her brother and to her mother but um there was like but her brother and her mother replied let the young woman remain with us 10 days or so then you may go whoa 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 that was not the plan that's not the plan I came with. And so then they said, let's call the young woman and ask her about it. And so they called Rebecca to ask her, will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. And so it just shows you like how much, how much down to the T that this was a purpose-filled road that the servant had to go on and how God was guiding him every step of the way and how God already had preparations completed before he even got there. And so Isaac, she left with the servant and she met him, she met Isaac and Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother Sarah and he married Rebecca. So she became his wife and he loved her and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. And that's how they met. And so I feel like this, as well as other scriptures in the Bible have talked about like how to find your spouse, how to find the person that's meant for you. And I feel like this was a strong connection in how to find, you know, your person, how to find the person that God made your person or the person that God um, wanted you to join together on this journey and spread his word. Because I feel like we all have this false pretense of being completed by someone when the only person that you're going to be completed or the only thing that you're going to be completed by is God. And when God feels like you're filled He'll give you this godly husband. I'll take care of you and treat you well and support um, the mission and be fully involved in the mission of giving the word to the world. And so on to Genesis chapter or yeah, chapter 25 and Abraham is now dead and he went and got buried to with Sarah. And so Abraham became the father of Isaac and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean from Paddan Aram and sister of Laban to Ar Aramean. My pronunciations are tough, but I just want to say Isaac was 40 years old when he was married. So for those kiddos out there who think that they're too late for staying in their parents' house at 25, you are not there is no rush to this life of marriage there is none whatsoever and so 
I had to pray to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer and his wife Rebecca became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her and she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger. And so I just want you guys to know that this was a foreshadowing, a big foreshadowing to the future and what was really and truly about to happen with their kiddos. So when the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. My dream. <laughs> the first to come out was red and his whole body was like a hairy garment so they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebecca gave birth to them. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter and man of open country while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for a wild game, loved Esau, but Rebecca loved Jacob. This is also crucial information because friends and I debated um, this passage and just this story in general and because I think we all got confused a little bit in the further scriptures, but... Um, once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. She said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. Jacob replied, first sell me your birthright. Esau said, look, I am about to die. <laughs> like, I need food. What is good to the birthright to me if I'm going to die? And Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil soup. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. So just to be clear, Esau basically sold his birthright, which is given to the first son in all occasions um, in the terms of, in, in, well, in those times, for example. As you're going to see in the future, there's the conversation of a blessing. Those are two separate things. And so his birthright is always meant to be given to the uh, firstborn but Esau sold that he you know gave it away now Isaac was about to give him a blessing but you know things quickly turned with the blessing let's continue so the Lord appeared to Isaac and said do not go down to Egypt live in the land where I tell you to live stay in this land for a while and I will be with you and I will bless you for to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. And one thing about God is that with every generation he consistently confirmed his promise and his blessing to Abraham because he wanted everybody to know that one, Abraham is the reason for your blessing. As well as the fact that is once I make a promise, I stick to it. And everything that you're going through, everything that you're doing, everything, every struggle, every win, it's all to the glory of myself, but it's also to fulfill this promise. And so, he continued to talk about how he will make the descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees, and my instructions. So Isaac stayed in Gerar because there was a famine currently going on. And so when the men of the place asked him about his wife, he said, she's my sister because he was afraid to say she's my wife. He thought the men of this place might kill me on account of Rebecca because she's beautiful, like father, like son. I just want to say that. But when Isaac had been there a long time, you know, Abimelech the king saw Isaac, you know, maybe like hugging her in a funny way or is this caressing, caressing her? And he was like, anyone who harms his man or his wife shall be surely put to death because obviously when the presence of God is with you, there is, there is nothing that anybody, any king can do to stop God from protecting you. And also to stop God from, from hindering them once they've hurt a child of God. And so I just want you guys to always remember that, that God consistently reassures us that I will be with you and I will bless you. And he said, for you and your descendants, I will give all these lines and will confirm the oath I swore to your father, Abraham. But consistently throughout the Bible, you would see God saying to his children that I will be with you and I will bless you. And one thing that I, I have to whisper in my ear at all times is just the fact that God is with me. 
And sometimes it may not feel like it. Sometimes the enemy might have like created this big shroud of darkness. But the one thing that will kill all of it is the fact that God is consistently with us. Consistently with you. Consistently with his children. And so. After that. Abimelech was like move away from me. Move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. And so Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar where he settled. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in this time by his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. So everybody kept popping out the woodworks talking about, uh, that water is ours, when he would dig in the valley and discover a well fresh with water there. So he named the well Essek because they disputed with him. Then they dug another... And then someone quarreled over that one. And the thing is, you know what's weird about this part is that when you're when you receive blessings, everybody else wants to claim that they're responsible for those blessings when they aren't, when they actually aren't. Like God influenced you to do this for me. God influenced you to have these conversations with me. God influenced you or God already had prepared you in this place to help me. And so there is nobody in control of your blessings but God. There is, I mean, they can quarrel over it. They can dispute it. God will give it to them. Because at the end of the day, he still has something greater. And so he moved on from there and dug another well. And no one quarreled over it. And he named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land. So God, yes, he, he clearly blessed everybody else through those dug in wells. After they disputed it, he was like, yeah, here, this is a little mini well, mini well, mini well. And then Isaac found and dug up one that was undisputed and made it his own and made it something that flourished. And so when, so when you work hard and, you know, someone might try to take credit. Yeah, I, I feel like it's just, it's so hard nowadays because I just don't, I'm not, like, as a Christian, I don't know if this is laziness or not, but I'm just not in the mood to fight over things that someone took from me someone might be quarreling over to me or trying to dispute with me because if you take it if you win god is still going to provide me with something better and so from there he went to Beersheba. but that night the lord appeared to him and said i am the god of your father abraham do not be afraid for i am with you i will bless you and i will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant abraham we hear it again the confirmation, do not be afraid for I am with you. Do not be afraid of anything because I am with you. Don't, don't shy away, don't hide because I am with you. And when God is with you, then who can be against you? And so Isaac built an altar then in the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent and there his servants dug a well. And so... The king came back to him and he was like, why you came to me since you were hostile to me and sent me away home me? And so he was like, we saw clearly that the Lord was with you. So we said, there ought to be a sworn agreement between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you. And so people, like, they always push you away when you're for the Lord. If that's the case, they don't always, but a lot of people will. And so when they do, there's a likely chance that they're coming back because they notice that there's something different on your side. They notice that they need to be on your side because you're on the side of the winning team. You're, gonna, you're on the side of the almighty God. And so who wouldn't want to be on that side? They might be jealous of the successes and the blessings that you've been achieving. But that's all through God. And you make it known that it's all through God. And that's how humility and being humble will save you. And so then instead of Isaac being like, well, no, you kicked me out. Um, I don't want to have anything to do with you. He said, yeah, okay, cool. You notice that God's with me, you came back, cool. Like, let's, 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 let's make a deal. And he was like, he was like, Isaac then made a feast for them and they ate and drank early the next morning. The men swore an oath to each other. And Isaac sent them on their way and they went away peacefully. Isaac had no bad will. And so when someone does something wrong to you and Jesus reconfirms this in the New Testament, like when they come back, don't hold a grudge, like don't be mad because you're just consistently holding the cycle of hate. 
when you can let bygones be bygones and allow peace to just overwhelm you and that makes you a true a, a better person a kind person a person full of humility in my opinion and so that day Isaac's servants came and told him about the well they had dug they said we found water he called it Sheba and to this day the name of the town has been Beersheba and so now we're gonna go into what happened with Esau okay guys this is just but when Esau was 40 years old, he married Judah, daughter of Barry the Hittite, and also Bezma, daughter of Elon to the Hittite, and they were a source of grief to Isaac and Rebekah. So not only did Esau marry two wives, and he married two wives um, outside of God's chosen people, and so immediately Rebekah was like, this is not what was supposed to happen. And Isaac knew that it wasn't supposed to happen, but like it said earlier, Esau, Esau was Isaac's favorite. And so when Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could do no longer, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, my son here, and Esau said, here I am. As I said, I am now an old man and I don't know the day of my death. Now then, get your equipment, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat so that I may give you my blessings before I die. Now Rebecca was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebecca said to her son Jacob, look, look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, bring me some game and prepare me some tasty food to eat so that I may give you my blessing in presence of the Lord, of the Lord before I die. Now, my son, listen, clearly, carefully, do what I tell you to do. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice young goats so I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. Then take it to your father to eat so that he may give you his blessing before he dies. Now, Jacob, I... I blame Jacob and I don't blame Jacob entirely but I do like Jacob just was like yeah I'll do this no questions asked I already have the birthright if there's a chance that I can get the blessing then so be it I will and so Jacob said to Rebecca his mother but my brother Esau has a hairy mile while I have smooth skin what if my father touches me I would appear to be tricking him I would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing which is facts which is very factual and so his mother said to him, my son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. She said, I will do anything as your mother to get you this blessing. And I also believe that she didn't think that Esau deserved it because of who he married. And so he went and did everything his mother told him to do. And then he went to his father and said, my father. Yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. Now, we don't support lying over here. We don't. But this is consistently the foreshadowing of what it was to occur. The younger son would be greater than the, than the first. And so Isaac asked his son, how did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord your God gave me success, he replied. Smooth. Then Isaac said to Jacob, come there so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you are really my Esau or not. The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau, so he proceeded to bless him. Are you really my my son Esau, he asked, because you know, I feel like Isaac wasn't too, 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 too sure. And so he said, I am. Then he said, my son, bring me some of your game to eat so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him and he said, come to, some, come to the side of me and kiss me so I know that's you. And he smelt Esau because obviously he's wearing Esau clothes and he was like may God have may God give you heaven's dew and earth richness earth's richness and abundance of green and new wine may nations serve you and peoples bow down to you be lord over your brothers and may the sons of your mother bow down to you may those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed which is pretty OP in my opinion OP meaning overpowered because as the, the minute Esau curses him he curses himself with within the spectrum of the blessing that he gave Jacob the minute Esau uh, anybody curses Jacob is the minute that they become cursed within themselves and so Jacob you know quickly leaves he just dips out because you know he got what he came there for 
And so Esau comes through and Esau was like, hey, I'm your son. I'm here. I brought you what you told me to. And Isaac trembled violently and said, who was it? Then I hunted game and brought it to me. I ate it before you came and I blessed him and indeed he will be blessed. And he was like, there's no doubt about it. The blessing's gone. Like that's all gone to Jacob. There's no, no if, ands, or buts about it. And so of course Esau was like, bless me too, father. Like my birthright's gone and my blessing's gone. Like these are both things that have been taken um, from me, from Jacob, which, you know, he traded the birthright willingly. But anyway, that's the point. And so Esau said, isn't he rightly named Jacob? And so Jacob meant he grasped the heel, a Hebrew idiom for he takes advantage or he deceives, which is tough because, you know, he used deception multiple times, like throughout his lifetime. But I find this crazy because God doesn't necessarily choose us as perfect, you know, and I'm not going to act like I'm not a liar. I'm not going to act like I never lied. Of course, I still want to be chosen by God, despite the fact that I lied. And so when we look at this, when we look at this chapter, we look at what Jacob's done. We're like, oh, you know, sometimes we think, why would God choose Jacob? Well, why would he choose you? Because Jacob shares similar qualities to all of us. And so if those qualities are shared, why would he not want to choose someone imperfect? Someone who's who's not who may not be highly favored because he represents us and he represents the fact that despite how deceitful we are, how imperfect we are, God loves us and chooses us to be the bearers of his nation and the, the ch his children. And he's a proud father. And despite our imperfections. And so Isaac answered Esau, I've made him lord over you and have made all his relatives his servants and I've sustained him with grain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? <sighs> it's a tough life to live. And so Esau is, ma Esau is mad. He was, and he, his father, he was like, bless me too. And his father said, your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness. This doesn't this don't really sound like a blessing, but I <laughs> would hope. Away from the dew of heaven above, you will live by the sword and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. And so Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He said to himself, the day of mourning for my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. So he said, I'll wait. I'll wait out of respect for Pops to until he dies. Then I'll come after Jacob. And Rebecca was told what her older son Esau had said. She sent her for her younger son Jacob and said to him, your brother Esau is planning to avenge himself by killing you. And so they said to flee to her brother in Haran and stay with him for a while until his fury subsides. And she didn't want to lose both of them in one day. And she also didn't want Jacob to go and marry um, a Canaanite woman or a Hittite woman. If Jacob takes a wife from among the women of this line, from Hittite women like these, my life will not be worth living. That's strong. That's strengthful words right there. And so in Genesis 28, they said, you know, don't marry a Canaanite woman. And Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him again, saying, you know, take a wife for yourself there from among the daughters of Laban, your brother's, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your numbers until you become a community of peoples. May he give you and your descendants the blessings given to Abraham so that you may take possession of the land where you now reside as a foreigner, the land God gave to Abraham. And so he ran and Esau knew that he ran. And so Esau learned that Isaac had blessed Jacob and had sent him to Paddan Aram. Um, when he blessed him, he commanded him to not marry a Canaanite woman. And Esau then realized how displeasing the Canaanite women were to his father Isaac. So he went to Ishmael and married Mahalath and the sister of Nabioth and the daughter of Ishmael, son of Abraham, in addition to the wives he already had. To try to make up for something, but he didn't get the blessing at the end of the day. And then that's what, like four wives now? And so then Jacob has a dream at Bethel where you know after him running there above it said the lord um and he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of god were ascending and descending on it 
there above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your fa your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac, I'll give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. So this is another promise that he is making to Jacob, consistently making promises to those and their descendants. And he reconfirmed it again. He said, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land and I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. That's some firm, confirming, promisey words that God does fulfill. And so him consistently, every generation having this conversation, like this is the promises that I have laid out for you and this is how I'm going to achieve them. And he consistently, consistently confirms that I am always here. I am always with you. So what makes you think that he won't always be with you? He is consistently confirming within his actions, his blessings and his love that he will always be with you. And so when Jacob woke up from his sleep, surely the Lord is in this place and I was not aware of it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And so he created a pillar, poured oil on top of it, and he called the place Bethel through the city, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey, I am taken and will give me food to eat and, work and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house and all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. That's the beginning of the ties, guys. That's the beginning of the ties. And so, that is the end of our great story of Isaac and Rebecca slash Jacob and Esau, which it hasn't been, it's not done yet. Once we take a good look into Jacob's life and you know the struggles and tribulations that he had to go through um, after that, we see that really and truly he got what he deserved for tricking being a trickster but he also was still consistently and continuously blessed and always on a journey with god until he dies and so thank you guys for watching also there is something new down in the link below if you guys have a prayer request if you want someone to pray for you um to talk to you i am a hundred percent willing and so there is a link tree link that has like my Instagram and the podcast links and all of that stuff. But right there you'll see a prayer request. And so with that being said, I would be so happy to pray for you guys. If I can pray for anything that you want, need, feel, or if I can even relate with you, that is, it would be huge for me. And so put in a prayer request if you need one, when you need one, if you want one. Um, and I'd be happy to do that for you. Without further ado, I am so happy that you guys came to listen to the podcast. You can put, you know, anything in the comments, positive, any questions that you may have, any topics you might be, you might want me to touch up on or talk about. I would be very happy to do so, but... I am so excited I'm going to be seeing you guys next week at this podcast at the same time Monday at 6 a.m. bright and early on all platforms near you. I'll see you later. Bye.